Hi, my name is Erica Carlson. I'm a theoretical physicist at the Purdue Quantum Science and Engineering Institute. Welcome to Quantum Conversations, where we have interesting conversations with researchers working on all things quantum. Our guest today is Jeremy Levy. He's a distinguished professor uh, at uh, University of Pittsburgh and the founding director of the Pittsburgh Quantum Institute. He's received several awards for his research. He's a fellow of the American Physical Society, a fellow of the Association for the Advancement of Science. And uh, welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Erica. It's a really delight. Um, it's a delight to, to be here, and, and it's an honor to be um, for you to have chosen me for this uh, interview. We'll see if it's interesting, though. You know, that's up to the uh, audience to, to determine. I have no doubt it's going to be interesting. Uh, Jeremy and I talk about science a lot, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, so the first thing we like to ask people is, why are people so interested in all things quantum right now? What's the big interest? People have been interested in things quantum for about a little more than a century. Um, so since the discovery of, of quantum mechanics and quantum theory, um, it's kind of taken over. It's, it's taken over entire fields uh, of science, like chemistry, you know, explaining the periodic table and leading to um, technologies that we take for granted today, computers, lasers, um, MRIs. I, I mean, it's really hard to think of how uh, quantum mechanics has not impacted um, society and technology and our understanding of the universe. Um, so I think people have been interested in quantum for some time, um, but, but something different is happening now. And, and the thing that's different is the, you know, sometimes people call it quantum 2.0 or the second quantum revolution. So if the first quantum revolution was the discovery of quantum mechanics and um, everything that we you know, just mentioned, um, they're kind of these leftover ideas of things like quantum entanglement and, and actually the ability to control quantum systems, not just know that things are quantum mechanical, um, and then using that to develop new types of quantum computers, quantum sensors, uh, and so forth. Um, this is something that is, we're just at the beginning. It's kind of like at the tw beginning of the 20th century, um, except that we're armed with, you know, state-of-the-art technology and understanding, um, but we're we are in an infant phase, really, uh, and it's fascinating. So, um, you know, there are all these really hard problems um, that are out there in the world, uh, really hard, challenging problems, um, and one of the questions is, well, can these um, nascent quantum technologies impact them? Um, we don't know the answer to this, um, but it's something that could, you know, it could save the planet, it could save, you know, it could save us, it could save our environment, um, uh, and it could develop, it could, it could produce um, new technologies that are just so uh, far out there that we have trouble uh, imagining what they are or, or, you know, how they're going to impact us. So that's being at the beginning of a quantum revolution or any kind of kind of scientific revolution is exciting. Um, it's a little unsettling um, and it involves sort of reorganization of thought and, and how we do things. Um, and that's really why I think like the Pittsburgh Quantum Institute was founded. That's why um, uh, the Purdue uh, Quantum Science and Engineering Center was founded. Um, this is part of a re reorganization of knowledge and, and approach to science and technology that, that's underway. And I think that's why people are excited. It is a very exciting time. Like you said, we don't know what we're going to discover. So it's exciting to go discover it. But we also don't know the impact that it's going to have on humanity uh, until we go out there and discover the things. Now, one of the things that we also like to ask our guests is what originally got you interested in doing science? So I always liked math. I enjoyed, you know, playing with puzzles and, and doing uh, and doing mathematics um, apart from physics. Uh, and I did have really outstanding physics teachers in high school. I also had research opportunities in, mm -hmm. at high school and in college throughout. Um, it was really a combination of um, the right environment, I think, a supportive environment, um, um, and just uh, something that was aligned with my interests. I think that that uh, that got me um, moving in the direction of wanting to be a physicist. And just curious, was there sort of some moment in this development when you said, "That's it, I'm going to major in science in college, or I'm going to do what I can to get a career in this field"? 
I do remember one time in graduate school, okay, maybe that's a little bit too far down the road, but I was, a, you know, I was doing my research and, um, and then uh, there was a conference in Aspen that um, uh, graduate students don't go to Aspen workshops. Um, you know, in the winter there, you know, it's like, it's too decadent, you know, there's like skiing and, um, and so forth. But um, somehow, for whatever reason, I was allowed to go to this conference. I was the only graduate student. Um, and I went to the, uh, I went to this thing and it was just, it was so much fun. Like, cause you know, you, you spend like two and a half hours in the morning, but you've got your, you know, you've got your ski poles, like in your hands ready to go and then you go skiing for a few hours and you come back and you have more uh, time uh, to talk physics and uh, and then you like cycle through like day after day it's completely exhausting um, both physically and mentally um, but I thought well wow so you can actually go to conferences and have fun and like and and learn about physics and um, so for me, that was a very uh, like um, energizing uh, moment, and in some sense, I have taken that philosophy to heart ever since. Mm -hmm. That um, you know, I work extremely hard, right? I work probably ninety hours a week, right? Not exaggerating, um, but I do it because I enjoy it. And and I think if you find statistically, you know, physics profession has a very high. Uh, one of the highest like job satisfaction rates and people do it because um it's aligned with the things that they like to do so they like to work hard um, and they're they're motiv self-motivated we also like to ask people of all the great research that's going on in your lab right now what's one thing you're particularly excited about i've always been interested in um being able to kind of have control over systems. In fact, that's what we do in the second quantum revolution. We're trying to control quantum matter, uh, the quantum mechanical behavior of systems. And uh, about a decade or so, um, we discovered uh, that it's possible to, uh, to program a quantum material. Um, it's actually like, kind of like Etch-a-Sketch, um, but at the nanoscale. So the you know, you can basically sketch with a with an etch a sketch uh, a tiny lines, um, and uh, in our system, these tiny lines are conductive regions in a insulating background. So that you can just draw these little conducting nanowires, um, and they have really interesting properties at uh, low temperature. Um, and so this is something that we've um, we've been interested in doing for um, in, in developing and understanding that the. the complex behavior of these systems and what happens when you make them into uh, wires versus, you know, two dimensional shapes and patterns and so forth. Um, so this is actually uh, something that we're really starting to turn a corner now because we have a new technique for doing this, uh, which involves um, an electron beam. So it's, it's, it's actually much faster uh, than using this sketching thing. So it's more like, you know, like a, like a fast printer. Um, and so we're really excited about what we'll be able to print, uh, sort of these patterns or, or you know, uh, periodic patterns or non-periodic patterns and understand how electrons move in these networks of uh, wires. And, um, and so we're really interested in, in trying to control and, and produce new forms of quantum matter in this way. So for a long time, we were stuck with the materials that we either find in nature or we can grow in a lab through crystal growing methods, but you're at a stage where you actually can design new quantum materials. Is that accurate to say? I would say that that's where we want to be. I okay. don't know that we're quite there yet where we can just say, I want this property and then we can program it. We would like to do that. Um, and I think part of the challenge is that we don't know precisely what the writing does to the, you know, how the electrons behave. This is something that we're kind of doing in real time. So in parallel, as we're controlling these systems, we're um, trying to use that, uh, what we measure as a clue and sort of consistently understand the behavior through the experiments that we do. So, but yeah, that's, that's certainly the goal. Thanks, Jeremy. Some very exciting stuff to think about. And thanks for being our guest today. We appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, Erica.